Sanjay is asking, is it the absolute necessity of existence to have infinite experiences of itself through infinite experiencers? There is a big problem in your question. Who can? <laughs> yes. <laughs> experiencer is only one. It is necessary that there will be one experiencer because it is the existence itself. And the experiencer is not an object. You cannot count the experiencers. Only objects can be counted. Isn't it? Existence is one. No doubt about it. And it is the one that is witnessing. It has this ability to witness. That is what is happening. There cannot be many experiencers. What about the experience? He is saying to have infinite experiences. So, what do people say? How many experiences are there? Yes, Mira is right. One experience. And this is difficult to understand actually. You do not see the experience as one object at a time. Is it possible? It's not possible. Look at your experience right now. It is a continuous stream of appearances. Let us take an example of the dream. When you are dreaming and the dream is over, you get up and if somebody asks you how many dreams were there, you will say one dream. But in the dream, there are people, there are buildings, there are cars, there are who knows what, and there are objects, there are events, there are many experiences you will say in the dream. But when you wake up, you see it as one. There was one experience of the whole dream. You say it like this. And let us take another example. You went to a trip to somewhere, good place. And that is one whole experience for you. We also ask you, how was your experience when you visited this country or this place? And then you break it down into events and people and objects. There are many things in the experience. There are not many experiences. Can you count the experiences? You will need to see them as separate from each other. That is impossible. The stream has no break points. There are no markers in the stream of appearances which says that this experience ends here and the new one starts there. No, one complete continuous stream. It is one experience. Why is that? Why is it when? Because it is the existence. There is only one existence. Remember, always remember. So, one experience, one experiencer. They are like clay and pot, clay and pot. The changing aspect of the clay is pot, statues, bricks and uh, many things. But the unchanging aspect is the clay. But they are one. There is only one pot and there is only one clay. It is appearing as many. It is like this. The existence is like this. Lot of, lot of confusion here. I would suggest that uh, understand the, these basic things first. Experience, experiencer, experiencing and existence. These four words are the founding pillars of a path of knowledge or Advait. If you don't understand these things, the whole thing will just collapse. It is useless. Like he said, I uh, by infinite experience are related to it as infinite individual entities. No. Individual entities are not experiencers. They are experiences. There are various forms in this stream of experiences. So, this is a failure to recognize what is the experiencer and what is the experience. If you ask uh, somebody who is not on the path of knowledge or does not have any spiritual training, who is watching? You give them an object and you ask them, who is watching? Why am I watching? What do you mean by am? My body is watching. Now your legs and your hands are not watching. What is watching? My eyes are watching. No, no, the eyes are not watching. You see. Oh, my brain is watching. What has happened here is there is no clue about the experiencer. They are identifying these various objects which can be experienced as the experiencer. So, Sanjay is also doing that. There are not many experiencers. These, these puppets are experiences. They are objects, not the subject. So now, okay, he, his question is, is this the only purpose of existence to have infinite experiences? Well, even if you say, even if you remove the infinite word from there, it is, uh, you say, is, is it the purpose of the existence to have experience? And the answer is still no. 
Now I am going to ask again to people here: Is there purpose of the existence? Can you assign a purpose to the existence? When if you do have a purpose, yes, Pratib is very right. Correct word: a causal. There is no purpose. The purpose is simply a thought in your mind. There is no purpose to anything at all. The existence is something which cannot have a purpose. You see, uh, but even your ordinary things. that we see around have no purpose at all your life has no purpose this human body has no purpose nothing at all it is all assumed we assume the purpose based on our experience which is our ignorance like what is the purpose of your keyboard yes the purpose is to type you can say end goal also but give it in the hand of one year old child and the purpose becomes to tear it apart to take away all the keys they will do it <laughs> give them the keyboard any child will simply reduce it to pile of keys or give it to a dog or to a caveman for example for the caveman what is it it does not do anything so th- there is no inherent purpose in anything actually so what do we see we see we project purpose on objects because they are useful for us and then we project the purpose on the whole of the existence we try okay this keyboard has a purpose my coffee mug has a purpose holds the coffee this knife has a purpose cuts the vegetables cuts the onion my fridge has a, has a purpose that cooling down the food now let's check what is the purpose of the existence and this is the faulty thinking <laughs> the purpose is useful for survival it is an invention of the mind existence is totally useless and so it has no purpose and you can see that even things such as a distance a distant galaxy has no purpose at all there are millions of stars in the sky what is their purpose nothing at all what is the purpose of this whole empty space nothing at all you can even say that the moon is hanging there in the sky no purpose you can assign a purpose to the sun because its sun is useful for survival isn't it so look at the mountain here you know what is the purpose of this mountain this pile of dirt stones who made it for what purpose to look beautiful you see now you can keep thinking like this invent the purpose so you know, the mountain has forest and the forest has the animals and the mother nature wanted animals and cook up a story you keep coming closer to your home and suddenly everything has purpose now but in your home also you know there is a there is some dirt in the corner of the room what is the purpose of that dirt nothing amit is asking experiences are of infinite variety right you can say that yes you see you can allow this much of inaccuracy in the words because we cannot just remain very very tight about these words sometimes you use these metaphor metaphorical poetic things there is an infinite variety there but i'll tell you that the variety is only apparent it is the illusion of variety what is there behind the variety can somebody tell me <laughs> there is when yes nad yes yes write the english words please do not mix satya singh emptiness well you went too far vibration yes what is how many varieties of vibrations are there basically when basically when it is up and down motion that's all <laughs> change of two states that is all there is behind all the experiences do you see a variety now so the variety is also illusion i see no variety even you know look at something not from the point of view of the vibration look at something from the point of view at the level of patterns isn't only one pattern repeating everywhere look at a tree the branches are just small form of the tree and the branches even continue inside the leaf leaf has little branches the veins in the leaf they branch out throughout the leaf you take a microscope and look in the leaf and you will see it. again same thing yes fractal pattern amit is right is there a variety in the tree no one thing repeating infinitely not infinitely mostly you know many many times countless times then look at the jungle the tree is copy paste copy paste copy paste with slight difference all the blades of the grass 
slightly different but you can you you know they are copy paste one dna there you see you go to the basics and you will see that the variety is lost the variety is lost and then somebody said emptiness satya said yes <laughs> how, i mean how much variety is there in emptiness the real nature of the experience is emptiness no variety it is amazing that you know there is so much there to look at although it is nothing <laughs> although it is nothing you can take the example very well known example of a computer game there is a lot to do in the computer game isn't it a lot of stuff to watch and the characters and there's wars and magic spells and so on at the level of the hard disk only numbers not even numbers they're signals ones and zeros we call them high voltage low voltage two states isn't it beautiful yes bits and bytes is there a variety there no you won't be able to look at them for more than 2 seconds meaningless but look at the whole world that is created out of these uh uh-huh. voltages just two i mean there cannot be less than two you know there won't be any change there and more than two redundant any number can be expressed as binary isn't it we don't need more digits so uh, the, the whole universe is created out of this two states and the, and the problem is that these two states are also empty they are of no nothing nothing is vibrating so there is a potential there we say there is a potential of being in two states and uh, that's all there is done end of the story now you'll say how boring is that the whole existence totally boring but look at what has happened if you let it play if you let the vibration vibrate look at it what can the vibration do who is this that is vibrating there is no who obviously we can say that it is me me only i am the whole illusion and i am the witness of the whole illusion end of the story now this can appear infinite this can go on and on and on in time this can go on and on in space who cares we know it is not like this what it is that also we don't know and we see no need to know also otherwise your mind will never settle down there is no need to know there is more fun in being what it is than knowing what it is because you say the knowing and all forming of the relations and all it's the intellectual activity and the intellectual activity is happening in the vibration and that is the vibration only and so it cannot know the real knowing is not knowing when you are happy with not knowing then you are established in bliss before that confusion before that ignorance so continue continue knowing till there is nothing left to know and that is what will be left nothing will be left to know <laughs> nothing is the only thing that you will know so somebody posted that cartoon today not today yesterday i think nothing makes sense and the other fellow says yes isn't it nothing is the only thing that makes sense everything else is you totally meaningless you need to simply look just like we took a look at the tree isn't isn't the whole tree now kind of meaningless what is it, what is it doing there absolutely nothing copy paste this is how we get uh, the detachment from the illusion you get detached from the illusion by knowing what it is and that is why a lot of it is stuffed in your program if i don't tell you the maya you will remain tangled there you see there were ancient people who said that everything is made from numbers can somebody tell me that tradition in the name of the philosopher and the tradition everything is made from numbers sankhya is very old i am talking about something recent they said geometry is the building block of the universe i'll give you one more hint that he the philosopher was a mathematician also yes yes sachinarayan has the answer pythagoras not euclid not euclid even though euclid is also a great master yes chank is also right pythagoras and they were called pythagorean and that was kind of a religion at that time everybody knows about the plato and all you know he was the one uh, like who understood this uh, sankhya is older than these people <laughs> you see everything is made up of quantities sankhya says 
and you will find the physicist, the modern physicist also saying the same thing. Now you can see the, how the cycle goes. Last time we were talking about you know everything is cyclic. Never assume that it is linear. It's not going from one point to another. It's never like this. It's going round and round and round. So the Sankhya philosophy is the outcome of a previous cycle and the remnants of that can be seen in the Platonic, Pythagorean and all these people. So they were very right actually. But nobody understood in their time, nobody understood why Pythagoras said this thing. He has seen it, so he said it. You can also see it and say it now. <laughs> it's obvious to many people that there are only quantities, there is no substance. You are measuring something, but you are not measuring anything at all. That day we were talking about the problem of measurement. And now you can understand, you see, if there is nothing to measure, what are you measuring? You know, Will it be accurate? Never. Nothing is measuring nothing. One vibration is measuring the other vibration. This is what your senses are doing. The senses are simply instruments of measurement. And the senses are also vibrations in the memory. The vibrating patterns in the memory that appears somewhat stationary because of the survival mechanisms. Amit is saying golden mean ratio. You see, there are many, many ratios everywhere. Pi is the most interesting, isn't it? That we were talking about the pi and other constants. How is it possible? Uh, I, I'll leave you with this thing, no? Uh, the law is the mind. Mind is the law. Law is the mind. The laws of the memory are the memory. You need to contemplate on this thing. We see this because this is how it is constructed in the memory. It is a machine. It's a big machine. Like you disassemble the software or hardware in your PC, you will see that the patterns are appearing now. There are patterns there. Things are happening in similar way everywhere. Those who do the reverse engineering of the software, they, they know all these things, you see. There is a jump instruction. That must be the for loop. Now they look for the number, how many times it is jumping. This is how they find out, reverse engineer it. We can also see, we see all these numbers, you see, ratios and all those things. We can reverse engineer the Maya. And now you have entered the path of occult. They have already done that. Already it is done. 